Hi, Eva here. How are you today? Today we're going to talk about Quinacridone Sienna from Daniel Smith, which I just purchased. So let's see. Whoops, it dropped out like no tomorrow. Just because, you know, I live up in Truckee at uh, 6,000 feet and here you go. So the colors are splashing out. So I'm just going to try and put that over here for right now, not let it go to waste. And I took out one of my little uh, color swatches for my, you know, I have this uh, big binder, my color swatch book. And so I keep pieces of arches, 140 pound cold pressed watercolor paper with a black line through. So I'm ready. Anytime I get a new color, I swatch it out. And first I'm going to just going to put clean water on about two thirds below the black line. That's how I do it. I do every, every swatch, you know, try and do it somewhat the same. And so let's go here and load up our brush. And I'm just using my half inch dagger brush and let's start. So I start above the line because the whole idea is for this blue, uh, black line is I want to see how transparent or how opaque a color is and I want full strength up here so that's what I'm getting full strength try and get it you know nice and as straight as possible and then you know as it hits the water down here it starts of course uh, it starts to dilute and that's uh, what I want I want to see what it looks like full strength and when it's watered down so that's that beautiful color I can totally see why Lisa loves that color we're gonna let it dry and while it dries I'm gonna tell you what's in this quinacridone sienna. Let's see here if we can clean up the tube. I'm just going to put it in here. I'll have to use it up in a painting soon and I also have to you know take it out of here because otherwise it's just going to gunk up everything which I don't like and I also hate to waste pigment, good pigment like this because you know a tube like this it's about 14 bucks. Bought it on Amazon because you know I have uh, I have the free shipping deal so and I only needed this one tube otherwise I like to buy it at Jerry's Adorama or Cheap Joe's or, or one of those sites. Or of course from my wonderful local art supply store Nevada Fine Arts. But these days I do not shop in person in any store, be it grocery or otherwise. I want to stay I want to stay alive until we get the vaccine. That's my motto. Anyway, what I wanted to tell you is what's in this Quinacridone Sienna looking at the pigment information, which I didn't do before I purchased it. I just, you know, bought it. So it has Quinacridone Call P R209, so that's pigment red 209 in it. It has quinoc quinacridone gold PO, so that's pigment orange number 48. And then it has nickel azo yellow, which is pigment yellow 150, which is my favorite yellow. And I pulled them out of my binder. So here's the nickel azo yellow from Daniel Smith. Here is the quinacridone call from Daniel Smith. So those two colors are in. And then quinacridone gold are in. Now I only have the quinacridone gold from Winston Newton. And so it's not going to be exactly the same as Daniel Smith and I don't have a Daniel Smith. But just so you know, quinacridone gold consists of also a mixture of pigments. So that's why I don't know what mixtures are in the Daniel Smith one. I can probably look it up online. I'll try that. In the quinacridone gold from Winston Newton, it has PR206, so that pigment red 206, pigment violet 19, and pigment yellow 150, which is nickel azo yellow. So basically this color from Daniel Smith plus and plus minus consists of these a mix of those three. I just want to let you know that in general I am a big fan of single pigment colors just because I feel that they are a little bit more predictable and since I have all three colors here I could probably mix myself something that would be very very close to this color here. I would be surprised if I couldn't and we'll test it out once we have this swatch done and we'll take a little test right and see if we can mix those those three colors together to get something similar to this one. Wouldn't that be fun? So what I'm telling you is if you have these colors and it doesn't have to be the quinacridone call because the quinacridone call is the exact same pigment as quinacridone red which is the red I used to have on my palette. And I have another video coming up and that's going to be probably on my Eva Nichols Art Academy page or school or whatever you want to call it as a part of a beginner watercolor beginner course that I'm working on where I'm going in depth with materials and you know all the supplies you need and we're going to go through uh, all the various basic watercolor techniques and stuff so it's kind of like the foundation for watercolor but I'm trying to do it in a fun way and I go in depth also with colors and what colors to choose and what colors to you know start out with and stuff because we all know watercolors you know they're kind of expensive so as a beginner you know you might not have a budget where you can go and buy 12 colors that'll be over a hundred dollars in most brands you know and I am a big believer in buying
buying good supplies, not student grade. I, I think at our age, you're an adult and you really want to get into this. Don't bother buying the cheap stuff unless you really, 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 that's the only way you can paint. That's a different story. But if you can afford it, buy the good supplies. But of course, you know, you don't need to buy like a whole bunch. It's much better to start out with a little and then kind of build on that because, you know, you, you need some knowledge before you can make good decisions on what colors to buy. That's a whole different story. We were talking about Quinacridone Sienna. So once that's dry, we're going to do another coat and then we're going to do a little test run on how to mix our own Quinacridone Sienna. Okay, my little sample here is dried. I didn't do a, all that great of a job with the gradation. You can see this is as far as my water went and I got a little bit of a line here, but you know, we're not going to worry about that. And now I'm taking, uh, I think this is a half inch. doesn't say, well, I can't read it anymore. No, it has a number. Um, it's a, uh, just a flat brush that I like to use for this particular step. And it's probably, I don't know, it's half an inch, quarter inch, something like that. And here's my quinacridone sienna. And I'd like to do a section where I glaze over the first to just see what how it glazes. And that's all there is to it. So then that just has to dry and then I'm going to lift out. And so it's dry. You can see it, it layers or glazes beautifully. And then I usually do this. Well, not usually. I always do this. And that is I just, you know, have these little circly things that you use for your binders if the little holes wear out. And so I use that up here in this little square where I have the two glazes. And then I take my brush here and then I gently, with a damp brush, scrub, use a tissue, Kleenex, and dab one time, rinse my brush, and screw up a second time. So I'm not using a scrubber brush, just a regular brush. Two times, and let's do it one more time. That's how I do it for all of the ones I have in my binder. So I get a true comparison. And that was three times and then let it dry before I remove that and then we'll talk about the color. I have a lot to say, just warning you. Okay, I finished my quinacridone sienna and um, I already told you that it consists of actually three pigments. Pigment red 209 which is quinacridone coal, pigment orange 48 which I didn't think I had but I actually do have it from Daniel Smith. Here it is and they call it quinacridone burnt orange and then the third color that is in is this one here, nickel azo yellow from Daniel Smith. So those three colors are combined to create this color. So obviously, if you have these colors, you can do it yourself. Then another interesting fact is that I, you know, they, they say that it's those three pigments or quinacridone gold. Well, uh, I found out by doing some research, I don't have quinacridone gold in the Daniel Smith, but I looked up on uh, the website and I found out that Daniel Smith's quinacridone gold consists of quinacridone or burnt orange and nickel azo yellow. So there you have it. No matter how you um, how you uh, look at it, these three colors is what's in the quinacridone sienna. And I actually looked through my binder again because I had found, you know, quinacridone gold from Winston Newton and it consists of three colors, uh, pigment red 206, pigment violet 19 and pigment yellow 150. Now the nickel, uh, the quinacridone gold uh, in Daniel Smith consists of the quinacridone burn orange and the nickel azo yellow. Those two combined makes their quinacridone gold. And then I looked in my binder and I actually found that color combination in the nickel quinacridone gold from M. Graham. So this is actually the same pigments that Daniel Smith used for their quinacridone gold. Are you all dizzy now? I hope I haven't confused you too much. And this is color nerding, folks. This is not something you have to, you know, worry about. If you are a new watercolorist, don't even worry about this. If you're a little bit more advanced and you love to, um, you know, explore your color a little bit more. This is this is what this is. Otherwise, you know, just disregard it. Don't worry about it. However, what I wanted to say with all that is, I'll put those aside here that we don't really need. This is the color that I just bought. Quinacridone Sienna. And I can see I even spelled it wrong here. I wrote Shara. That's no wonder I say Shara then. Sienna. Okay. That color consists of these three colors. Quinacridone Burnt Orange from Daniel Smith. Nickel Azo Yellow from Daniel Smith. And Quinacridone Coal from 
Daniel Smith. And these two are gonna be on my palette going forward. But I just wanted to let you know, you could make that one yourself. And let's try and see how hard or how easy is that gonna be. Let's just, I have a strip here. And here is my Quinacridone Sienna. And let's just put a little bit on here, just so we can see that. And, and definitely it's a beautiful color, no doubt about it. And then I need some Nicolaso Yellow Quinacridone Coral and quinacridone birch orange to see if I can create that one. It's so I just went through my colors and I found the three colors that the quinacridone sienna consists of. Nicolaso yellow. So I'm just going to put a little tiny bit of those three here in the lid. Nicolaso yellow, my favorite yellow, all time favorite yellow. That's the yellow I can't live without. I love it because it's transparent. Most other yellows they are, have white in them and I don't like it. But that I'm a lone ranger when it comes to that. But that's okay. I can live with that. And here's my quinacridone coral, my new go-to red. And then here I dug out my quinacridone burnt orange. And let me just show you now that we're color nerding. That color is very close to burnt sienna in the Winsor Newton that I usually have on my palette. That's my favorite color of burnt sienna. But I could totally live and I can see they're so close. But they're different pigments. So this one is pigment orange 48, single pigment. That's the way I like it. And burnt sienna from Winsor Newton that's also a single pigment. It's pigment red 101. All right, so here we got our three colors and let's just, hey, we didn't get our three colors. I forgot to squeeze this one out while I was talking. So yes, oh, see it has one of those, it, it's one of those that separates a little bit. Can you see that? It's it's not a big deal. Some colors have a tendency to separate a little bit if they sit in the tube for a long time and I haven't had that one out for, gosh, no, I, I don't even remember when. So anyway, let's just try and see because we already established that the quinacridone burnt orange is very, very, very close to the quinacridone sienna. We just need to put a little bit of red in. So let's put a little bit of red in and then we need to put a little bit of yellow in there. Okay, let's see. That was easy, but let's see. You know, I don't know yet how, how, how close I got, but let's take a look. So here, it's pretty darn close. What do you say? I mean, you can see right now, it's just a little bit more watered down than the other one. So we can do a little bit more. That's not hard to do to get that color. Not hard at all there. And then, you know, you can push it a little bit back and forth. And as an extra bonus, let me just clean it up, clean the yellow up here, and then a little bit of the burnt, uh, the uh, quinacridone burnt orange into the yellow, and then you have, then you have your quinacridone gold. So honestly, folks, it was so easy to get this quinacridone sienna by mixing these three colors together, and it was certainly also very easy to get my quinacridone gold mixing these two colors together. So I would personally, and and everybody does what they want to do. I would not buy quinacridone sienna. And I would also not buy the quinacridone gold. I would buy the Nicolaso yellow. So that's my yellow. Then I would buy the quinacridone coral. And then if you wanted to go with the Daniel Smith colors, I would probably buy the quinacridone uh, burnt orange or the burnt sienna because I'm pretty sure with the burnt sienna and I have it right here. Let's just test it out. I already know it as a matter of fact, because you know, these are colors I use all the time. See, that's uh, quinacridone gold from Winter Newton looks like this. So it just has a little bit more yellow in than I did there. And here is the um, the nickel azo yellow or transparent yellow has two names. Uh, and I can squeeze a little bit more of that out so you can, can get the, the real deal. See, there's that one. And then if I went, instead of going with the quinacridone burnt orange, if I went with the burnt sienna instead from Winsor Newton, the one that I uh, have on my palette already, and mix that with some of the transparent yellow or nickel azo yellow, the same pigment, this pigment PY150 and you can see here there is a quinacridone gold and this one didn't get quite you know yellow enough because it didn't put enough yellow in but you know I could I could make that too anyway there you have it don't necessarily you know I mean if you love to have it uh, already mixed up for you I mean go for it you know everybody does their own thing but I am just saying that I think it's smarter to go with single pigment colors because they're more predictable and you can mix all sorts of other colors with them and they're easier to mix with because you only have one pigment to deal with uh, for, for instance here the quinacridone gold from Winsor Newton it, it has three colors 
colors and one of them is purple it's to tone it down a little bit i totally understand that but i mean really so that one's going off my palette also and i haven't used it much in the later years because i feel i get a beautiful quinacridone gold by just mixing my nickel aso yellow or my transparent yellow with a little bit of burnt sienna and voila there it is and it's not difficult you know certain colors it's nice to have them uh, on your palette because they are you know they're kind of a pain to mix but not this one so there i hope this was informative and not confusing so that's it for today. I hope I didn't confuse you completely with my little explanation about the colors, but whatever you do, have fun. That's all. There are no real rules. I'm just telling you what I know. And you know, I think going with single pigment colors in most cases, is the way to go. So have you subscribed to my channel yet? And remember to hit the little bell so you know when I upload again. I'm going to do a painting demo next video, promise. So take care, stay sane, stay creative, stay positive. It'll all be all right.